first turn from sin, recognize that you're a sinner and that you need him and turn to him. But how's your prayer life? Spurgeon continues by saying, the causes of this mournful state of things are manifold. It may arise through a comparative neglect of prayer. And then he says, for a neglected closet, prayer closet, he means, is the beginning of all spiritual decline. He says, a neglected prayer life, a neglected closet, is the beginning of all spiritual decline. And so if you have become older as a Christian, but you haven't been growing as a Christian, then just simply being older as a Christian hasn't helped you very much. Is your prayer life more dynamic than it was in the past? Does it mean more to you now to spend time with God than it did at some time in the past? Especially teenagers and young adults and, and even uh, as we get older, when a person first, come, first comes to the Lord, they usually recognize through discipleship, through, uh, through reading their Bible and so on, that one of the first things that they need, in fact, uh, some people who have gotten away from the Lord and come back to Him, recognize that, that one of the most important things they need is a daily communion with God. How many of you think that's important? Daily communion with God. A, a prayer life where you spend time with God every day and where you read your Bible and study your Bible. And of course, there are lots of other things too. The, the corporate worship service and, and messages that God gives the pastor to give to you. It concerns me if we get to a point where we don't think we need those kinds of things anymore. We've grown so much spiritually that we don't need to listen to the message. We don't need to hear, uh, we don't need the, the, the Sunday school lesson or the Sunday school class. Because if you are, if you really believe that we're continue to continue to grow as a Christian throughout your life, then you might need it more today than you even did then. Because you may be going through some trials that you've never gone through before. And if you neglect your time with God, you won't have the spiritual strength to face the things that you have to face. Now, a lot of times, sickness turns people to God. It's unfortunate that sometimes God has to get us flat on our back before we'll look up to Him. It's amazing how when people get in the hospital, they want the pastor to come and pray for them. But sometimes, when everything is well, before that, they're not thinking about much about that need. So sometimes God just has to get us flat on our back before we recognize that we need Him. And sometimes in other areas, God will let us let us get down to a point where we where we recognize how low we are, so that we have to look up to see God. Amen. We always have to look up to see God, of course, if we're going to see Him, because He's always going to be beyond us. He is the holy God. He is an omnipotent God. He's an omniscient God. He's all powerful. He's everywhere present. And the Bible describes us as being like the grass in the field that's here today and gone tomorrow. And it says your life, life is like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. We need God. We need His help. What about your devotion to God's Word? Do you remember this, the Bible passage that talks about Jesus being led out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? It was right after he was baptized. And, and I have learned this from personal experience, and some of you probably have too. Sometimes after the greatest mountaintop experiences in your life, those are the times when Satan comes and attacks you the hardest. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes after we've had a great revival and the, the services are over and the evangelist has left, Monday might be the day when, when everything seems to go wrong and Satan just seems to be on your case like never before. Well, if he already has you and you're not on fire for God, then he doesn't have to do a whole lot. But if you are getting to a point where you are wanting to do something for God and be on fire for God and work for Him, 
then Satan has to worry more about you, and so he's going to attack you harder. So sometimes after the greatest mountaintop experiences are the times when we feel the, the onslaught of Satan more than ever before. And that's what happened to Jesus. He just had one of the greatest, greatest experiences so far in his life. He was about 30 years of age, and he was baptized, and he came up out of the water, and there was a voice came from heaven, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. It was the initi his initiation into the ministry, and immediately he went out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and went through one of the most difficult times of his life. He got so hungry because he was fasting and thinking about his ministry, that, uh, that the devil came along and tempted him, and he said, well, if you're really the Son of God, why don't you just turn one of these stones into bread, and then you'll have something to eat. And what did Jesus say in response? He said, man shall not live by bread alone. Now, what did he mean by that? Now, we think of bread as a slice of bread we're going to eat. A piece of toast you eat in the morning. But bread is food. It's more than just what we're thinking of when we just think of a piece of bread. Man shall not live by just taking care of his physical needs. If you don't, if you get up in the morning uh, and it's kind of late and you don't have time to do everything, do you skip devotions or do you skip breakfast? <laughs> the answer to that might tell whether we think Man lives mainly by bread. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, you need spiritual nourishment. You need the word of God. If you're going to make it through the day, you need God's help. And sure, if you don't eat breakfast, you might feel weak by the middle of the morning. And particularly if all you had for breakfast was just a cup of coffee and you grab a donut and you eat it and they say that gives you a immediate high and then your sugar drops and you have a low. And then you're starving and can hardly wait for lunch. But what happens if you don't have your devotions? What happens if you don't spend time with God? Are you ready for the day? Are you ready for that grouchy person you have to work with? Or for that difficult person that, that, uh, that you have to deal with? My wife uh, answers the phone all day where she works. And she comes home at the end of the day and a lot of times tells me about different phone calls. How somebody will call and, and uh, of course, she's a good person to be answering the phone because she has a lot more patience than I do. And uh, she's a good person to be answering the phone for them. But uh, she tells me about some of the things that happen. And she has to stay sweet. And she has to be nice. <laughs> do you always feel sweet and nice when you're dealing with other people? You might not want to have to do that. Most of the people in her place of employment don't want to do the job she does. They hate it because people call and complain. And who wants to listen to people call and complain? Are you ready for those kinds of things if you didn't have your devotions? Are you ready to be sweet and nice if you haven't spent time with God? Might be hard for some people even if they have. But if you haven't spent any time with Him, are you going to be ready for what God has for you for the day? So do you have the same excitement for personal devotion that you once had? The second thing is this. Is God still first in your life? And of course that's connected with the first one. But Spurgeon says this. He says that when we are living in the past spiritually, when we're saying like Job said, how I long for the months gone by. When we're saying that in a spiritual sense, how I wish things were like they used to be in the church. How I wish my spiritual life was like it once was. And we can say it's the pastor's fault because he preached a boring sermon or, or it's the music we sang at church or it's something else. But it might be that we need to look inside and say, does it have something to do with my relationship with God? Amen. Is God still first in your life? Spurgeon says, when we're living in the past spiritually, it may be the result of idolatry. That's pretty strong, isn't it? The heart has been occupied with something else more than with God. The affections have been set on the things of earth instead of the things of heaven. 